So Marlow was the dapper. Everyone looked up to him. Around the playground, he would swagger, flashing, knowing, gutsy grins. He must have been the envy of the school. He really just seemed incredibly cool. But what generated awe was a marvellous talent, which dazzled dudes and damsels see. Marlow was a rapper. He could carve out verse from the canvas of life, rearrange verbs into badass rhymes. They were witty and clever, some shocking and gory. But now, Shaky P comes into the story. Now, Shaky was a young'un, a couple of years below. He hadn't had the chance to shine, hadn't had the chance to grow, but people observed. When he stood up in class to read out his work, it had a certain artfulness and feeling for words. His teachers were certain it purred from his core, and this was inferred in his termly reports. Now, Shady had noticed Marlowe's playground superstar and would gaze with engrossment when he lashed out his bars in morning break. He would watch the way he peppered his syntax with assonant rhythms to rev up his listeners, with relevant discourse that tested the kids' thoughts, delivered with crisp force and elegant vernacular that captured every sentiment. And the more Shaky listened, the more he was dead impressed. Back home of a weekday evening, Shaky would sneak away as soon as dinner was eaten. And even if his maths or Latin had not been fully completed, he'd immerse himself deeply in the task of becoming a lyrical demon. Now, one of his teachers had said that to write good stuff, first you've got to do some reading. So, he began to burrow through the fossils of humanity. Long before him, stories of great sacrifice and tragedy. He pretty soon began to be cocooned in this linguistic spree. His room was so rammed full of books, his parents couldn't bring his tea. Then, Shaky started writing. His pen careered across his pad, and Shaky was excited. As school gave way to summer, Shaky blitzed his way through narratives. He tinkered with verse structure and he whisked up verbal tapestries of finely detailed nuance with dactylic textured grace. Within those heady days, Shaky ventured to a place of some other higher order, yet his calling niche was found. Then suddenly the school bell rang. He was back in the playground. Tentative at first, Shaky plucked up to give loosely blocked miniature performances just outside the music block. At first a tiny few would watch, but soon enough the news had got around the school and pupils flocked. And Marlow clocked his routine lost some numbers from his usual slot. Feathers ruffled, he discovered who was rivaling him and thundered over to where Shaky fluttered through his bars and interrupted. Enragedly, he then unleashed a torrent of uncalled for beef. Yo, Marlow, right, check it. My raps are swift, but you're just a wretch with no natural gifts. Your ragged rhymes and rapping shite. You're actually a torn spotted maggot pie. <clears throat> oh, shaky pee. <laughs> I blaze it well while you pray for the bell because you are unfit for any place but hell. These bars aren't raps, they're just mixed up. You're a jarring clapper clawed pig nut. Who is this little horse and dwarf twit? He's so young, he's probably never successfully undone a corset. <laughs> well, well, you're a noble coward, you're, you're phony and dour, and, and the only times you've had sex is when you're alone in the shower. <laughs> Who is this little horse and dwarf twit? You're a jarring clapper clawed pig nut. These little little rats bane you just a frothy flea. When you're older, you won't be better, you'll probably just copy me. This ain't a lottery, cause I'm the one here who knows how to drop properly. Your naughty philosophy ain't half as sophisticated. You cobble your style out of Marlowe's own innovations. You're a little baby, a milky skeins, mate. Your mommy's waiting, run home, you lily livered wayface. By this point in the proceedings, the crowd is cheering loudly with every point to see who had the soundest flows. But it was still impossible to tell who was itching ahead. Whose verses had the edge? Shaky your Marlowe's. <clears throat> My bars play like treacle. Yours are just all about Satan and evil. You're boring, you're bobbing hell hated measles, you're a yeasty weasel. Cause, cause I can weave loads of different stories in one play. You just write one plot line and that's it, you're done for the day. And oh right, oh, oh right, oh right, oh, oh, well, here's an example you'll all want to follow. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, well done, Shakespeare. You just wrote the same word three times. What? <laughs> and the and here you go, Bert, you can keep mine. And you know what? I think I'd be suspicious if I was your examiner. 
I know for a fact you've never travelled to Padua, Venice, Verona, Corfu. You probably got your mum to write your place for you. Now look, I've got dreamy functions bound to scupper you, because you're used to spleeny, ancient, snouted mongrel news. I'm telling you, kid, you better be gone. So wise, so young, they say never live long. You're a foolish mutter, bootless scut, and you should give up. You can't do this, blood. Your plays are shit, you're a slavish twit, and if victory's close, I'm claiming it. Cause beauty starved with your severity, cuts you off from all posterity. So yeah, come step to me, but I bet you'll never be skilled with the verse to my level of dexterity. <clears throat> But other worthy patter that I sprinkle and disperse on my pearly platters. And, and you should learn from it, not curse, because you're just a surly bladder. A pribbling mystery and brimming with piss, you're a dizzy eyed gig, a churlish flat dragon. You're an, you're an unmuzzled hedge pig. And if this is your best bits, it won't be contested, just where you should wedge it. And, and yeah, my, t my tomorrow line is repetitive. And that's the whole point, but you clearly don't get it, Kit. Perhaps you should check out Spark Notes or something. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it, Marlo, you're a one-hit wonder. I've stolen your thunder despite being younger. So for goodness sake, someone pluck us asunder. My music is the food of love, it's got the tools to smolder. And I'm sorry to have to say this, cuz, but no one rates the Jew of Malta. <laughs> and no one's going to be cheeky, but here's some free wisdom, bruv. Perhaps you should try writing something that's not about religious stuff. And your lyrics would get better if you cut back on the boastfulness. And remember that when it comes to English, I invented most of it. It's a good thing. We both know this. I tantalize emotion with a tortured ingenuity. I pour a tiny beauty with raucous this and soothing heat. I've got godlike understanding of the spectrum of this battered sea. I warm it up and eke it out and make it sing climatically. I know this might well anger thee, but mate, your tether's tied. Cause the G spot of humanity you'll blatantly never find. <laughs> You're a canker blossom, I'll spank your bottom, I'll still be elated when your crap's forgotten. You run fed Ronyon, come now, come again, shaky pee with a lunchtime clobber in. They continued in this vein for the remaining minutes of break. <laughs> As they drew to the final seconds, the ravenous tremors started to tilt towards shake. And as the bell screeched its authority through the frenzied air, Shaky P was declared battle MC extraordinaire to rapturous ovation. And while everyone still agreed that Marla was amazing, the prevailing view was that Shaky was even more gifted with masterful creation, an ability to tinker with each atom of the song. And as Marlow sloped dejectedly off to his afternoon lessons with the feeling of defeat still creeping in his bones, he had to agree that Shaky P was indeed in a league of his own. <laughs> Thanks.